Namaste once again. So I will just Namaste. first share um, This is how we have planned our 10 sessions for 6 to 8. So, Namaste Chandrani ma'am. Uh, she is also one of the faculties who will be taking Sharda ma'am and Chandrani ma'am and myself. We will be taking our 10 sessions. I will be taking two sessions, Sharda ma'am four and Chandrani ma'am four sessions. Uh, we, we decided to take one one lesson. From 6th, 7th and 8th, depending upon um, our own personal choices. We have not got any feedback from any schools that we have to take this or that. But we decided that every lesson, we will deal with the learning outcomes. What methodology can be used for effective training uh, of the children? And finally, how do we go about with the assessment? This is how we are going to go through each lesson. Some are biology, some are physics, some are chemistry. And the, the um, I feel each lesson has its own way of a process, finally, which is very effective for children to understand. And at the end of the lesson, after the assessment and a one or two revision, there is a wow factor in the child. Some children take maybe one or two periods to understand one concept. They say, ah, very easy. But as we keep on doing the lesson with different methodologies, different way of expressing ourselves, all children at the end of the class should have, ah, so nice. I understood. So each one has their own speed of learning. And our methodologies, our learning outcomes, our assessment should be very clear. This is the experience that I have a vast experience in teaching the children. And I believe that every lesson cannot be learned in the same time. Some children will take maybe a week. Some will take one term. Some children do finally in the second term electric current and it affects beautifully because they need that learning more and more and nothing is wrong. Each one is learning according to their uh, speed. So, but our methodologies, our learning outcomes have to be very, 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 very specific and it should help all the 40 or 50 in the class to understand and move move forward because we all of us have an heterogeneous group of children. All of our students are heterogeneous. We don't have the same IQ levels. We don't have the same economic level. We don't have the same exposure level. So we should understand that our group of 40 children are heterogeneous. So our methodologies of teaching should be very, very carefully picked up according to the topic and according to the children. And there are many types of methodologies which we all the three teachers will be taking very specific to every lesson. Is it clear? Am I audible? Am I? Um, can we just? Uh, yes, ma'am, you are audible. Audible and is my speed okay? Okay, yes, ma'am. Ma okay, ma'am. Okay, ma so we have decided nutrition in animals, electric current, sound, transportation in. Uh, <clears throat> One second, transportation in, yeah, heat, metals and non-metals, respiration in organisms, force and pressure, body movements and light. It is an amalgamation of all the three subjects because again, each uh, branch of science has a different methodology to teach. And with our experiences, we can put all types of methodologies in practice in different lessons. And being science, we have lots to show the children. 
we have lots. If it is a small filtration, we ask them to observe filtration of tea and tea leaves when mama is making. Most of our processes are happening inside the kitchen. So, science is something which the children are bombarded with all those experience they are getting bombarded in the nature itself. They see a plant growing. They see a flower blooming. They can see stamens. They can see pistils. They can see petals. They can see a uh, ripening of a mango. So we are very lucky as teachers because we have so much that we can see or we are doing in our homes. So it becomes the methodology. Uh, if When you have to teach the methodologies to, I mean, um, uh, you know, uh, select a methodology, it's very easy for us. It's very, very easy for us. So with this as a background, so this is the plan that uh, we have uh, decided as three teachers. And um, <clears throat> so first, uh, I will just share the lesson. Now, first is the content. Let us understand, we know that uh, autotrophic is there, heterotrophic is there, but what is the lesson, um, the content with which the author has written? Sometimes nutrition, I mean, uh, you can have, uh, say, a lesson where the organisms are divided into um, invertebrates and vertebrates and the whole lesson goes on like that. That can be the division of the lesson. In this lesson, it is nutrition in plants divided into autotrophic, heterotrophic. So, we should understand on what basis the lesson is divided. Even in chemistry, we have substances are divided, either divided into metals and non-metals. That can be one classification. Another classification, he says in seven, substances are divided into acid, bases, and salts. So first we have to understand how the content has been structured in this in each lesson. And when you see the, the nutrition in animals, we have first a few important terminologies. And you should also understand, I hope everybody is, most of us are using the NCRT book. And the seventh standard, if you observe the NCRT books, in seventh standard, the number of uh, terminologies that the child is exposed to is massive. Nutrients, nutrition, then you have autotrophic, heterotrophic, parasitic, um, then you have uh, uh, saprotrophic, insectivorous. If you see most 90% of the terminology that is used in the lesson are new. So we need to be very careful when we uh, teach, explain each terminology because each terminology will be used in ninth. Each terminology will be used in 10th. Whenever I teach the 10th classes, I tell, tell the children, this is studied in, already we have studied in 7th standard. This is the repetition of what is there? We have learned about, uh, we are going to read about respiration in animals. Exhalation, inhalation, aerobic, everything is taught in seven. It is just a little bit of extrapolation in 10th standard. So please understand that we have to be very, very subject specific because one terminology is used till 12th. It is for their life. Actually, CBSC syllabus is for life. You go for an interview, they will ask you a terminology which you should have known because you have studied till then and it is a part of our language. What are the main nutrients in, uh, uh, in uh, 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 a piece of bread? So you should know what are the important nutrients, carbohydrates, uh, proteins. So you should immediately correlate to the word nutrients. So whatever terminology you are teaching, they are for life till 10th. After that, there is too much of specification, uh, specific uh, teaching in 11th and 12th. May, we may not use those words. But till 10th, the syllabus is made for life. Yeah. So I'll just go through the contents. After which I will come to... Okay, we have nutrition in plants. So if you see, no, 
uh, beginning he starts as carbohydrates, protein, fats, vitamin, minerals are the components of the food. Even the word component had to be taught. In recipes, we say ingredient. Here we say component. So that component is also a new word for children. For students. So we need to understand the components of the food are called as nutrients and nutrients are necessary. Again, what is the function of nutrients? They are necessary. And he goes on to say that plant will synthesize food. We get, um, we, they get it from, and uh, uh, plants can synthesize food for themselves, but animals, including human, cannot. They get, um, so every word is something that they get from plants or animals that eat plants. Thus, Please understand this beautiful sentence. Human and animals are directly or indirectly dependent on plants. Then again, you should say, why directly? I eat carrot. The deer eats the carrot. The rabbit eats the carrot. That is direct. What is indirectly eating? I eat the goat. So even this sentence needs an explanation. Because this sentence beautifully is asked in a food chain in 10th standard. We are... Ma'am, indirectly, directly, this just, we just think of a sentence. But for children, they are not able to correlate what is directly eating and what is indirect. So I'm just specifying that every sentence we need to go through. The mode of nutrition. So he says, what is nutrition? Is the mode of taking in uh, food by the organism. And utilization, utilization uh, or in the body. And then... He classifies nutrition as uh, autotrophic and heterotrophic. And here we should say, what is the meaning of auto? What is the meaning of trophic? Like photosynthesis, heterotrophic. We need to break the words. Bio, bios, logy. Logy means study of. Bios means life. So everywhere, wherever there is a terminology which came from Latin, we need to break the words and go ahead. So here he says about photosynthesis and uh, he talks about, uh, I'll be talking about these things in uh, learning outcomes. He goes about stomata, then what are the things needed? Because we all of us know the uh, content as such. Then we have a beautiful diagram. We children love this diagram. Diagrammatically show the process of photosynthesis. So they really enjoy it because pictorial and then we have a stomata diagram and then we have a beautiful experiment. And then oh, what are the synthesis of food other than carbohydrates? Then how nitrogen is? Nitrogen is a very important part of proteins. And how is it important uh, for the uh, plants? Then other modes, he comes into the parasitic mode. There's a beautiful uh, this thing. And there are lovely videos. And please understand, especially urban children, we don't have access to plants. Yes, Ashwini. Ma'am? Okay. Okay, it's a baby. And uh, uh, we don't have access to plants. So we, we have a small uh, garden in our school, which our principal, ma'am, uh, uh, it is her brainchild. During the COVID time, we took some part of our land of the volleyball court and made a lovely garden. And she put radish. By that time, when the radish started growing, the children came to school they understood, they never thought that radish grows under the ground. We are not aware because it does not have any mud when they see radish in the shops. Please we, let us not take anything for granted that children know. When we, whenever I start a lesson from nothing they know to the known. There were maybe one child who will not know that the radish, but we should tell these plants, especially this Amar Bale. I have not seen this Amar Bale or Cascuta plant in South India. I have seen in North India. I do not know. You should share your experiences and tell me whether you have seen this Cascuta as a uh, plant parasite. Have you seen? No, ma'am. Yes. No, ma'am. So, most of us have not seen. Okay. So um, then we have insectivorous plants, the pitcher plant, and then we have the sapro, saprotrophic. This is bread and all. We can beautifully show uh, spoilt bread in the class. We have symbiosis, the lichens, and we should correlate rich lichens to uh, the main food of the reindeer. 
and then we can sing a song on Rudolph the reindeer, who which will eat um, lichens, uh, and the reindeers are the animals in which Santa Claus comes. So, so much of correlation can happen. So, this finally, he asked whether they are heterotrophs or autotrophs. So, that's a question thrown to us. So, I will stop sharing this. Now, this is the content and we have, there. we have understood that the content is autotrophic, heterotrophic and there are some parts. Now, each part we will take and we will talk about the learning outcomes. Now, what is a learning outcome? Very important. Everybody is today talking about learning outcome. An outcome-based learning in education is which emphasizes is placed on a clearly articulated idea of what students are expected to know and able to do at the end of schooling. So our goal is that they should understand and what are the expectations that we have to decide and tell it to our children. That is learning outcome, outcome-based learning. So what will be an outcome-based learning? One small. So we have to decide um, which areas do we touch upon. There are three areas that we have to touch upon when we are thinking about writing the outcomes. First area, the domain, is called as the cognitive domain. Cognitive comes from the word thinking. Everything happens here. And this is the normal thing that we are uh, going through. Listing, comprehending, comparing, analysis, justification. All these are cognitive. All the thinking that we normally do. This is the cognitive domain. That is the outcome. List all the types of nutrition that is found among the plants. Compare the uh, two types of nutrition, symbiotic and parasitic. Okay. Um, then you can have a, what are the different raw materials that are needed for photosynthesis? What will happen if there is no photo uh, light for the plants? Uh, uh, justify with the help of an experiment or you give them an experiment and tell them what happens, what is their observation, what is the result. So these are all cognitive. The next domain is effective domain. Effective domain is how is it affecting the child? In nutrition and plants, one area that you can tell is, oh my God, there is so much of biodiversity. The children will appreciate the biodiversity. When you teach pollution lesson, what is affecting us? The children became, become aware of the ways of uh, the environment is getting polluted and they get motivated to take care of the nature. They get that motivation. Suppose we are talking somebody about a particular um, <clears throat> wastage of energy. If it is a wastage of energy, children understand. The children, uh, children understand the importance of uh, electricity and the children get motivated to save electricity. This is one of our outcomes. So first is the cognitive domain. Second is the effective domain and the third one is psychomotor. In um, psychomotor, we do experiments with our hand or we make a slide with our hands or we draw the diagrams. These are all the psychomotor domain. And when we are doing a lesson, all the three domains have to be kept in focus. Then only your learning is over. Am I very fast? <clears throat> yes. No, ma'am. So, learning outcomes are very important. Once you have focused the learning, I'll be showing the learning outcome, uh, outcomes in another 15 minutes. Then we start thinking of the methodology. What will be the methodology that will, I will use to teach? Suppose I'm talking about balanced diet. Then I try to get all the 40 children inquiry-based. Who likes what? One will say pav bhaji, one will say chaat item, one will say vegetables, one will say uh, parotta. Then you get all the data. This is inquiry based. Make a bar graph and tell all of us love each chart. Eat chart a good food. Then you tell them. 
Oh, few people are saying dal. Parp. And the bar graph, if you see the parp will be this much only. The top will be pizza. And from there you can tell them what is good. Then you can have a beautiful lunch. We normally have this whenever we are talking about food. We have a lovely salad day. Fruit salad day, vegetables. We definitely have in all classes right from third. And I'm telling you even in eight and ten they will enjoy. And each one understands the importance of a fruit salad in a different manner from, manner from third to ten. So they make their own salad. They put the pepper, they put chaat powder, they put pomegranate, they put fruits, they put lots of vegetables, uh, germinated seeds, and we have a lovely, that is one of the methodologies to learn. Experiential learning, the experience. Different methodologies are there. One of, for us, experimental method is a very beautiful method. Every time we can use an experimental method because lots of experiments can be done. Acid, bases, and salts, 40 children, I'll ask them to get 40 liquids from the house. Tamarind water, lemon water, curd, buttermilk, milk. Then I'll carry harpic from home. I will take a small can of Pepsi. Then I'll ask them to get uh, uh, eating soda, washing soap, all the different um, creams you know, to show how much of acidity is there in the cream. And I get enough uh, litmus paper and uh, liquid litmus uh, uh, blue and uh, red. And I do with every child and ask them to make a tabular column and say, yes, this is acidic. This is basic. I show them distilled water, clean up the test tubes. I get a lot of test tubes. It's really fun. But at the same time, the children have understood which is acidic, which is basic, and how the, and I can make China rose uh, water with that. I can make um, that red cabbage is there. Even with that, that's a wonderful indicator. And their greeting cards are made with turmeric. That the beautiful activity is there in CRT, where everybody makes a beautiful card, say Happy New Year or Happy Diwali, and they give to each other. At the same time, they use the soap, which becomes red in color on turmeric. So all this can be done beautifully in the class. And in the end, I finish saying that, yes, now I'm going to test. We all love to drink Pepsi. I don't like Pepsi. Pa. And then they put the red litmus and with the, I mean, blue litmus and within a fraction of a second, it turns blue to red and they find, oh my God, this is acidic. And just keep quiet because already you have told it is corrosive in nature. It is going to eat up your body organs if you eat this, eat this more. So that is how you have to choose. So different methodologies and query based is there. Then deductive methods are there. Uh, then experimental methods are there. Many methods are there where you can use per lesson. So first learning outcomes in three domains. Then you have a lot of methodologies and then the assessment. For assessment, I believe in Bloom's taxonomy. I believe in Bloom's taxonomy because if you have, I'll just share. So these are the learning outcomes. You will find the cognitive, the comprehend, differentiate, analyze, learn, classify are all uh, the cognitive domain. And the drawing, draw the diagram of the cell and stomata is uh, effective domain. And you have the last one, they appreciate the way nutrients are replenished in the soil. How do the nutrients, then you can also talk about organic farming. Instead of using artificial, I mean, uh, chemical fertilizers. Here is, you know, you have to bring the real life scenario into your studies. That is where our children are failing. They may be knowing everything, but they are not able, they do not understand that actually what we are doing at home or field or work is an extrapolation of what we are learning. So organic farming can be taught here. You don't have to question, but at least the children should know children, all these things, it, the, the, so much of recycling is happened, put your cow dung, put the ash, 
ash of the burnt this thing in a village uh, there is only zero garbage you can any uh, thing uh, the farmer never uses plastic everything he eats he throws it the the waste matter the urea uric acid everything becomes a part and you can talk about organic the compost all that can be done then visual aids is very important one is we have the specimens in the lab we have the uh, this thing if you do not have the specimens when the when the school authorities are asking you put all these things in your list and there are plenty in the world uh, to order and to keep it and children definitely enjoy the specimens when we show them in the lab they may see a rat every day moving around in their house but if they see a rat inside a bottle they are very happy so there is a, a lovely uh, specimen of uh, cascuta and there are slides of stomata and plant cells this plant cell and stomata is normally done in 9th and 10th so if you can uh, you know how to make the slide in front of the children take them please take them to the biology lab a walk to the biology lab a trip to the biology lab we don't use it uh, try to find out one free period when the other 11th and 12th and 9th and 10th are you will definitely get one period in a month make it as biology uh, specimens or take them to the physics lab chemistry lab but yes of course you have to be careful and you can show the making of the stomata and stomata slides look wonderful when you even make it within 10 minutes that's what is my experience in 10th standard so these are some of the this thing you can show video also i have a video in methodology definitely this lesson will have teacher centered because everything is new we cannot throw the lesson see if it is germination of seeds in fifth standard five days before you can say take little bit of cotton wet it put some gram seeds green gram seeds and just observe and bring them on monday so that becomes a flipped class flipped classroom is you give them a little insight about what you really want from them let them observe first let us not pollute their observations when i tell them you put it in the refrigerator or you put it in the soil green gram one girl kept on crying my my plant is not growing ma'am and for a month she was crying that it did not grow each one had a wonderful experience some children brought such big plants after the 10th day the same thing with vegetative propagation also everybody i told them with the stem you have to uh, grow one plant garlic onions potato buds money plant aloe vera and they and pudina pudina stem if you put after 15 days so vegetative propagation you can have flipped classrooms experimental method of course there are so many filtration physics lessons all experiments and you can have a project also in this lesson they can just put pictures they can draw pictures and make a project they can get mushrooms and during the month of september october when it rains you find such big big mushrooms near your neem tree and all that where there is lot of decaying matter and they just carry these mushrooms and they bring even when i see i carry them to the school or any teacher sees near the house they will bring and show our children and how does the assessment go we have the book back exercises we can have a crossword puzzle so the crossword puzzles can be made by the children themselves you give them a one word somewhere nutrition and from there they make a beautiful crossword puzzle on their own so they would, if if the children don't read the book this is a beautiful my experience is wonderful that they will read the lesson because they enjoy making the crossword puzzle you don't make you give them okay Uh, i'll give you a center of letter what do you want okay i'll give you a big letter heterotrophic and from here there here there they make a huge and they'll say i'll tell them 10 down and 10 across make 20 take 20 words and make and they are busy flipping the pages you know otherwise they wouldn't have done that and they will write the clues also on the top so they have learned the definitions of nutrients nutrition heterotrophic autotrophic photosynthesis different raw materials symbi everything is there in the clue so your 10 definitions at least they are so happy to do that crossword puzzles is a big success 
you can use this, especially in this lesson, because it's, uh, it goes on on your teacher center, like what I'm speaking, and maybe you must be feeling sleepy also. This is a lesson where crossword puzzle is a super hit, and then you can visit the greenhouse and write the observation and conclude the purpose of the visit. Greenhouse also has many types of plants and um, different plants growing and how the temperature helps the plants to grow and how the um, people are using compost in greenhouses and how the nutrients are recycled in that place, you can show them. So this is your <clears throat> learning outcomes, visual aids, methodologies, assessment. Now we'll talk about, this is the Bloom's taxonomy, which we learned long back when we did our B.Ed. The first bottom one is uh, remember knowledge. understanding is comprehension after that application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. So one of the speakers of the CBSC training programs was telling that knowledge, comprehension, application are lower order thinking skills. Lower order thing, which we normally use for third, fourth, fifth. What is knowledge? <clears throat> Can we have one question of knowledge from this lesson? Just knowledge, what they have studied. Let her have a little uh, interactive session. One, only with knowledge. What is nutrient? Very good. What is a nutrient? That's knowledge. Yes, ma'am. What are, very good. Thank you, ma'am. What is a, What are nutrients? Comprehension. You comprehend, you understand and write. Classification of heterotrophic nutrition. Classification. Classification. Um, Classification of nutrition. Autotrophic, heterotrophic nutrition. Okay. And the types that yes. under we can discuss. Different you can have. Application. Uh, Differentiate, people, sorry. Yeah, please, please. Differentiate between. That is for comprehension. Uh, Differentiate yes. between autotrophs mm -hmm. and heterotrophs. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> then what can you have for application? Uh, uh, do mushroom have leaves? Uh, okay. Here you can have illustration. Illustrations are nothing but application. So talking about stomata, if you draw, it becomes application. Illustration and application is solving also. In maths, it's solving. Solving. How the plants absorb the nutrition, so nitrogen. Uh... That, that will come as explanation. Yes, ma'am. That will come in explanation. That is comprehension. Whereas yes. solving will come for application. Solving like commotion, time, those lessons are all application based. Applications. They're all application. Analysis. Actually, comparing, explaining, categorizing comes Acid under, and base. Uh, analyze. To compare. Compare will have differences and um, Similarities also. Please understand in 10th standard, there was a question. Between uh, parasites and then saprocytes. Yes. Nutrition. Yeah. Uh, what is the main difference between the insecurous plants and the uh, symbiotic plants like this? So compare, yes. Compare will have similarities and differences, both. So that is one. Then evaluate. Differentiate parasites from saprophytes. Mm. Yes. The next one. See, I'm going to higher order thinking skills. You can actually do evaluation even in um, the last part, evaluation or creation, that's called as. Uh, okay, evaluate. Justification, give reason is evaluate. Justification, give reason. Give reason. Do you give questions? And recent questions. 
assertion and reason questions ma'am yes assertion reasoning questions are all justification evaluation and then you have create create normally um, for biology you cannot create because the creation has already created but to create something new like in evs we have a beautiful lesson uh, drawing of a sketch of your neighborhood and you make your own symbols that is creation creation doesn't mean that you have to be thomas alva edison to create a bulb the creation can start from third standard itself something new creation of a new recipe yes create finally our actually our total um, uh, the end result is a, a, uh, <coughs> creation the last one evaluation so i have one more one beautiful uh, <clears throat> i'll just show you that also it has a little different terminology which is see this this is beautifully done remember understand apply analyze evaluate create this is how another way of taking the bloom stack on you computer in computer subjects you can design your own uh, uh, flow charts your imagination is creation imagine that you are the this thing of a particular city and then what are the different uh, rules that you will bring so that there's a safe traveling on the traffic different to uh, this thing next we have biology there's a little difficulty level to create something so plant this very very nice educational pyramid diagram which your question paper should have everything should not be under what is this what is that what is this explain this what 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 no 20% will be what 10% will be application 15% will be analysis evaluation prioritize um then uh, justification will be five marks so you need to divide your paper according to these this low low order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills when we make a question paper we normally do this we actually we are told or we are asked also what is the percentage of different types of question because certain question papers will have only what 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 list 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 that's it no justification questions will be there no reasoning questions will be there um then um, you have to be if you see no solving questions application oriented uh, application oriented also we are having nowadays comprehension passages also where the children are able to read analyze and then answer so we are having comprehension questions also so can i come out of this sharing yeah ma'am so that's how i take the lesson every day and my lesson plans are pakka it will have learning outcomes it will all have my visual aids it will have methodology of teaching and it will finally have my assessment techniques all my lesson plans will be made like that yeah see if you if you know how to read the content interpret the content then you are perfect with your flow chart when you are perfect with your flow chart then you know exactly how to Uh, declutter the whole uh, uh, content declutter and make it very simple so the child just learns with the help of flow chart tak 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 over done whole lesson is over autotrophic heterotrophic heterotrophic has four types autotrophic photosynthesis done in photosynthesis you have a few things autotrophic you have four that's over the lesson is over so if you make the lesson so simple the learning process becomes easy and then i the finale that i want to what is the time okay now i want to make you understand that there are learning preferences what are these learning preferences i'll give you a small uh, practical um, example <coughs> cooking i hope uh, all people here cook something in the kitchen okay 
Yeah, can you all please put on your cameras? Love to see you all. Okay, if it is not, fine. Thank you, Aruna Devi, ma'am. Thank you, Mobina. Okay, so now somebody says, no, you will learn how to cook. You will go home and learn and make that beautiful and the recipe will come out very well. Some people will say, I'll read once, I can cook beautifully. But some children, some women or men will say, when you are making, no, once you please show me, no. This is the third variety. The fourth variety is, when I make, no, then only I get the confidence. So there are four learning preferences. And I told you in the beginning, we are heterogeneous. So we have four type of children sitting and learning. All of us can learn 25% of what you do. I can hear, but I'm not the hearing type. I'm the doing type. I will understand, but I will learn the lesson if I learn according to my learning preference. Now, what are these? It's called as VARK analysis. V-A-R-K. V-A-R-K, VARK analysis. It is called as VARK. V-A-R-K. Please write it in capitals. V is for visual children. They will see and understand. A. Oral. A-U-R-A-L. Listening. They'll say, no, no, I'm not going to Super. R. Reading and writing. You see, no, some children will read and write and write and write and learn. And we'll say, what you're sitting and writing and writing, what you're writing. They are, that is their learning preference. And the last one is kinesthetics. Doing. Hand. Some children are very good in their handwork. And that's how they learn. So there are four learning preferences that you have to take care when you're teaching every lesson. All of excuse us have to me, learn. Ma ma excuse me, ma'am. Like there are four learning preferences. You cannot I mean, say, only keep on speaking, let them hear. No. Draw something on the board, a flow chart. Draw some beautiful diagrams with color chalk. Visual children. Visual okay. children learn it. Then I mean, there are ma some children. Yes, ma'am? Um, let me know once again for uh, A. A is oral. A U R A N. Okay. Or, this is called as work analysis. So there are four learning preferences in the class. And you keep on talking the whole time. But science, we don't have a problem because we use all these techniques in the, we are fortunate teachers. We can talk, we can draw, we can do, we'll make them right. So for us, we don't have an issue at all. But for every science lesson, we have to take something to the class. It can be a beaker. It can be a tomato with the sepals on the head. It can be one kottamali. What coriander they see in the class, they see it as a taproot system in the class. What grass they see, they see the fibrous root system in the class. Every day there should be something in the hand. That's why when there is a beautiful lesson called as body movements, during the month of January, I see that in the course of study, it comes in January because the whole place is full of snails. I take the snail, put it on a tile and the snail walks. Just keep quiet. Children enjoy the earthworm and the snail walking in the class. So visual learners, oral learners, they are preferences. That's why each of you, now can you categorize yourself what you are? How do, how do you learn? Please be frank. For me, I have to see. I cannot uh, read, write. I have to see. I am a visual learner. Every class, all the four types of students have to be addressed. Please keep this in mind. All the four learning preferences are to be kept in mind. I can draw the stomata. 
I can do the slide and show them. I can read about the stomata or I can uh, or an, just speak about it. So four preferences. You know, stomata, they are made out of uh, kidney-shaped guard cells, you know. And uh, in between the, guard, the two guard cells, like the rajma seeds, there's a hole. That's the pore that's called the stomata and through which the exchange of gases takes place. That is, you are listening to me. And then some children, I will read. This is a uh, stomata. Then I will draw on the board. I will show them the slide. And the last one is, definitely till 8th standard, we do not allow them to make the slide. If your uh, management say, yeah, pan it to me. Let them see under the compound microscope. Let them do, let them make. Let them, especially vegetative propagation, all can do. I make all the 42, especially. I mean, our school has been for us, we are six standard students are doing ma'am cells isolation from uh, onions. Ma'am, you are from which school, ma'am? SSB, ma'am. SSB, ma'am. Oh, excellent, ma'am. Excellent, yes, ma excellent, excellent. Our, uh, six yeah, standard students are able to do onion cells. Separation. We will say that I don't have a plant. But I will say that you go, go to the neighbor's house and tell uncle, uncle. One stem uncle, my son, science miss is asking hibiscus. They, our children don't have hibiscus. Children have not seen. And because of the building, there is no photo period also. Though I have put uh, hibiscus in my garden, we don't get the flowers. Because there's no, this shadow is falling on this side, this shadow is falling. East falls on this side, west falls on. So we don't have a photo period. So I'll tell them, go to the grandfather next door and say, uncle, you have that no, one stem, uncle. I want to see it grow. The uncle gives also. Even if he's a very bad uncle, he will improve. Because if the teacher says, even the uncle is very scared. And all the 40, I'm telling you, they bring something in show. The podina grows. Aloe vera grows, onion grows, potatoes grow, garlic grows, money plant grows, the coleus, the yellow color, red color, pink color, everything grows. And it is end of the, then I tell them exact copies and they grow faster. Have your kitchen garden. Then mama throws the podina stems, tell her, mommy don't throw, evening I'll come and put it somewhere. And then I tell them so much we are eating, no plastic dabas, buy a little bit because we have to buy soil in Chennai. We don't get soil also. So next pocket money is there, no. For 20 rupees you buy the soil, put it in this small, so much we are eating, no. Adiyar Ananda Bhavan, all those dabas, fill them up with the soil, put these things and make them grow. Put all the peels there, composting. How much can be taught? So, um, analysis of the content, learning outcomes, visual aid, methodologies, depending upon the preferences, learning preferences of the children and the need of the class and assessment through the Bloom's taxonomy. So, these are the three domains, the cognitive, affective and psychomotor. Three domains of learning. <clears throat> Outcomes in cognitive. These are the words. Cognitive will all have these in that. No list. Define, recall, recognize, understand, comprehend. Compare, analyze, differentiate, evaluate, synthesize. All Bloom's taxonomy actually comes here. Outcomes in the cognitive learning. <clears throat> Outcomes in the cognitive. Three domains. Give you two minutes. If you are writing it, fine. You're taking a snapshot, fine. Can I go to the next slide? 
I'll give you another two minutes, Chalo. Yes, Outcomes in cognitive. Next, yes, yeah. So you can write the students will be able to learning outcome. They will be able to. What is the sentence you use? The student will a, will be able to list the uh, advantages of vegetative propagation. The student will be able to define the following terms. So you'll have a common sentence on the top. The students will be able to, point number one, they'll be able to define the following terms, nutrition, nutrients, autotrophic, heterotrophic. They will be able to understand the following terms. They will be able to compare different heterotrophic types of nutrition. So this is what you can have for this biology lesson, outcomes in cognitive. Next one, you will have effective domain, get inspired, appreciate, excited, get motivated. These are all the things actually our teach, teaching should actually affect them somewhere. We come out now, so nice, yeah, super, ma, I enjoy. That should be the effective domain. Unless that happens, the teaching fails. And the teachers, it's not difficult to get into an effective, uh, to do an effective domain in the class. It's just that we have to show them something. All the children will get excited. They will appreciate they will get motivated. They will go and tell the parents, Appa, we will go walk today. Let us not waste petrol. What if it finishes? There's a beautiful lesson in EVS. Yes. In fifth standard. What if it finishes? They're only talking about petrol getting over. The fuels, the uh, non-renewable uh, sources getting over. <clears throat> They're excited to plant trees. So this is very important. The next one is psychomotor. Making posters, designing an advertisement, performing experiment, diagrammatic um, representation, and drawing. This is psychomotor. This they love. They love this part that the first cognitive only our children don't like. <laughs> Thank you, Shanti ma'am, for that smile. <clears throat> so this is the psychomotor. So all the domains you have to touch in the lesson plan as learning. So you will say the student is able to on the top, you will say their students are able to uh, represent the stomata with the help of a diagram. They, uh, they uh, the students are able to diagrammatically represent photosynthesis. The students are able to perform experiments to show that light is important for photosynthesis. Uh, making posters will be good for pollution, save petrol, designing an advertisement, um, maybe organic farming. So these are the three domains. Let me see the last slide. Domains to make for this thing. However, there's an overlap. Drawing in science may include labeling. That I wanted to teach labeling also. Let the lesson plan give us a clear objective of the process, implement the process effectively and get excited with the outcomes. 